All right, the last you saw the building, I had just finished installing the ceiling and the walls on the inside. Up to this point in the building, the things to do have drastically outweighed the things done. But this week, I finally feel like the scales have shifted and the end is within reach. With all of the big major steps complete, it is now on to the detail work. So I started with adding in the lights because I have been so amped up about them. I'll have nine lights in the woodworking side and six over in the metalworking side. I have a gang box at every planned light fixture and started by wiring in the plugs for each one. Having an outlet at every light fixture will also give me flexibility for mounting cord reels around so that I can have them drop down from the ceiling. For the lights, you might be familiar with the company Big Ass Fans. They are known for their high quality shop fans that are, as you've probably guessed, very large. Well, they also make lights and are so suitably named Big Ass Lights, even though the fixture I'm installing is actually pretty small. It's called the Garage Light and it comes in at just under 2 feet long and 10 inches wide. However, even though it's small, it packs quite a big punch, putting out 13,000 lumens. To put that into perspective, most lights at the big box stores put out between five to 6,000. This company has such a great sense of humor. Every light fixture comes with a pair of classic Wayfair sunglasses. It also comes with all of the hanging hardware needed and a really long cord. Now, since I'm hanging my lights so close to the plugs, I actually modified each light by dropping the bottom tray and cutting the cord to the exact length needed. Then stripping the ends and remaking all of the connections. These are LEDs that are expected to last 150,000 hours, which calculates roughly to 70 years of a six hours a day usage. They are by far the best lighting solution I could ask for in this new shop of mine. So thank you Big Ass Lights for supporting what I do and working with me on this build. Unfortunately, I will not have power in the shop for six to eight weeks. Ugh. So I was not able to turn on the lights at this point, but I do circle back to it later on in this video. So hold tight to see these guys actually turn on. After I installed all 15 lights, I took advantage of still having the scissor lift and tidied up the seam in the ceiling material. I used a product called Tight Grab. This is a product made by Tight Bond that is an instant holding adhesive. I applied a small amount to the few corrugations here and there that sagged and would apply pressure for a few moments before repeating to the next one. This was a really small thing, but it really made this line look so much better in the end. After installing the outlets and lights in the ceiling, I moved on to the sound system. Now, even though I'm a huge fan of my Isotunes, which is a OSHA compliant hearing protection that has Bluetooth capabilities, it's typically what I use to listen to music in the shop while protecting my ears. Adding in a stereo system is still a shop requirement for me. I'll continue to listen to music through my Isotunes when I'm working with my power tools, but whenever I'm just cleaning up my shop or simply hanging out or doing something that doesn't require hearing protection, that's whenever I'll bring in the stereo system. A dear friend of mine is actually a professional audio guy and helped me pick out all of the equipment and also recommended that I make a 10 degree wooden shim to place behind each one of the speakers to tilt it down some and get more of the sound going directly into the open space versus bouncing off the ceiling. For this, I would attach the bottom of the bracket and shim first, then insert the speaker so that I could adjust the top of the bracket and shim so that the speaker looked plumb. If I made the bracket plumb, then the speaker came out crooked. So by doing it this way, the shim and bracket is crooked, but the speaker is straight. After getting just the right amount of crooked, I could then take the speaker out and attach the top before wiring the speaker in permanently. Total, I will have four speakers in each one of the working zones on the woodworking side, the metalworking side, and then the porch. At this point, I only installed the eight inside speakers and will install the four outside ones after the shop exterior gets painted. For the head unit, I went with a Denon receiver that has Wi Fi and Bluetooth. Now, I had my last head unit just sitting out in the open on a shelf in my dusty shop. There was zero protection for it, and I didn't blow it out once but I never had a problem with it. But since I am starting fresh, I did take the time to build a cubby for this receiver and also the speaker switch that is required since I have so many speakers to control. I built this very simple cubby from the scraps I had left over from sheathing my walls, making sure to leave plenty of room on not only the sides, but also the rear of the unit for air circulation. I was contemplating adding in a perforated door of some sort, but honestly, I think it would be more hassle than good and I just don't think it's needed. So I stuck with a simple box with two shelves. I went with a French cleat to hang it on the wall and then I started terminating all of the speaker wires to the speaker switch. Since I did not label these wires as it was being ran, I used a battery trick a friend taught me to determine which wire belonged to which speaker. 
basically, after stripping back the jacket, you can take a AA or AAA battery, and the small amount of voltage will make the speaker sound off. This is a very quick and simple task, but it does require two people, one to run the battery and the other one to go seek out the sound. I really wish I could play a sample for you guys so you can hear how it sounds, but with copyright rules being what they are, I don't wanna take the chance on getting this video flagged, but trust me, it sounds good. All right, with that done, the next thing I did was crank up the tunes and get started on the outlets along the wall. A good tip I learned from my Instagram followers is to strip back most of the jacket on the Romex wire. This will make stuffing the box in the end a lot easier. Then something I picked up along the way is when using the wire stripper to bend the ends of the wire into a loop, flip the black wire up, but the white wire down, as these are the orientations they will need to be hooked onto the nuts of the outlets. If you aren't aware, when attaching a wire to a screw terminal, you want it hooked on so that when you tighten down on the screw, it will thread the wire into it instead of against it. After getting the plug wired in, I could use my square nose pliers to bend the wire into the back of the box and create a nice looking S instead of just shoving everything in. For this entire job, I pretty much only used three main tools, wire strippers, square nose pliers, and a 10-way screwdriver, which is a screwdriver with an interchangeable bit. It took me an entire day to wire in all the 120 outlets and then also another day to do all of the 240 outlet. It was amazing just how tender my fingertips were by the end of day one, toughening them up. Yeah. <laughs> With all of that done, I decided to clean up the space a little bit so I could start moving in some stuff. I started with the items that I could load and unload by myself because it was actually pretty late in the day, which included some of my smaller tools like the miter saw, the drill press stand, my thickness planer, and of course all my power tools which are hung on the French cleat system. But the next day the guys were all about helping me load all of the heavier equipment such as my table saw and band saw. And honestly, Cody didn't need much persuading to help me because by him moving all of my stuff out, now he has the entire garage to himself, which he has been dying for. So Cody rigged up something to use the lifting power of the tractor instead of the three of us trying to wrestle all of the heavier equipment manually. So let's talk about power. Unfortunately, I won't have power for six to eight weeks and I'm, I'm on the electrical company's schedule and they are just saying that there's no way that they can get to me sooner than that. So lesson learned, I guess I should have taken care of power way back at the beginning. So that means that I'm gonna be running an extension cord, just transferring it around from tool to tool in the meantime while I'm waiting on power. Oh, but my electrician did come out yesterday to terminate all of the wires to the breakers. And while he was here, I asked if he could wire in my light to a generator so I wouldn't be restricted to only working during the sunlight. So do you wanna see what nine fixtures at 13,000 lumens looks like? Me too. Let it up, pop, pop, let it up, pop, pop. Three, two, one, go! Two, one, go. Yeah. It's so cool, the list is getting so much shorter. Up next, I have the garage door installer scheduled, I have the painter scheduled, and I have all the plywood on hand to deck the underside of the porch. I'll do another video on the shop once all three of the tasks are complete, but in the meantime, I'm gonna start using the shop to knock out some woodworking projects that have been on my to-do list. So stay tuned if you wanna see this shop in action. <laughs>